Hello, my marvellous Pacific drivers. I've been playing this game for ages now, well over 110 hours, and I've compiled a list of the eight most useful tips for you in the end game of Pacific Drive. These are bloody great. Drop pods. These are brilliant things that get parachuted in when everything's going to hell in a handcart. Now you'll see them as purple triangles that arrive on the map when it goes yellow. So when the storm is enclosing, that's when you'll start seeing these drop pods arriving. It doesn't happen every single time, but it does happen quite often. Now I've tested it from when you summon the storm yourself or from a naturally occurring storm that happens when you get the uh, siren blaring out. It doesn't matter which storm it is, the purple triangles, the drop pods, can arrive in either condition. I've also been reading a lot of comments about you needing to have full limb energy, you know, collecting your orbs. That's not the case. I had them just drop in when I had hardly limb energy at all. So there doesn't seem to be anything that you can do that'll help them appear more frequently. It's just RNG. But they do appear quite regularly, to be honest, particularly when you see the yellow storm enclosing. It doesn't have to have completely engulfed the map. As long as it's starting to close in, you'll see them being dropped in behind the yellow circle in those yellow dashy bits. So once you see them, stick your blue marker on them so you can see on the screen where to go and head their way. Now you can see them from a distance, they've got like the billowing smoke from the crash, which is very nice. Gives you a nice little flare so you know where to go. Now when you get there, chances are once you get out of the car, you're going to have some radiation. So you better be wary of that. Got a few tips about that later on. But when you see the pod, it says you can only open it with your hands. Now I tried loads of different things to open them. Don't worry, there's like a little glove box in the bottom where it's ploughed into the ground. Open that and then you can start harvesting all your goodies. And there's always loads of goodies in it. You'll get loads of uh, tools, you'll get loads of resources. I've had Olympian bumpers from it. I've had loads of things from it. So it's sometimes when you're going to do these runs, I've gone out specifically just to harvest these drop pods. And it can happen in any zone area as well. It can happen in the outer, inner, or the middle one. So these are a brilliant thing for you to go after. Now when you're out in the zone and you get loads of radiation dosing you up and killing you, you know you can have it like 2,500, 5,000 or even 10,000 when the red storm comes in. Well there is this device that I've got perched on top of my car, it's called the Ion Shield. Now uh, it's, uh, you can create it, it's, it's end game stuff obviously so you need to be pretty much either completing the mission or, or, or getting close to the end of the story. But if you have a look at it here, there it is, the Ion Shield rather. Uh, you need to have had an advanced workbench and scan a hot dust anomaly and unlock a roof rack and also research the circuit board. And you need 1.4 unstable energy and 3 fabric to create it. This Ion Shield though is utterly brilliant because when you activate it, it creates a dome around the car which negates all radiation. And this is so incredibly useful when you're scavenging for things when a storm hits or actually when you're trying to get some stuff from the drop pods goodie drawers. The shield extends about a few meters out from the car. You can see there's like a white circle surrounding the car. So if you step outside that circle, you know you're going to be entering into whatever radiation is outside. There is one major drawback for it though. It sucks so much electricity, it's unbelievable. So make sure you've got your car kitted out with some uh, high-end batteries, something that can retain a lot of charge. Make sure you've got uh, battery jumpers or plasma torches to jump your battery up. But I find putting things like the uh, mini turbine on the side and also even the uh, solar panels to keep your battery charged up. Mini turbines are good considering the amount of wind that you get in some of these zones. Just to keep your battery topped up so that you know when you activate it, you, go, you can kind of look at the electrical energy ticking down as a timer almost. So you don't want to hang about when you switch it on. You want to get out, get what you want done, slam it in the boot and get off and get out of trouble. And talking of shields, there is one other shield that you need. Now this is acquired during the main story mission. It's called a limb shield and you attach it as a bumper. Remember, attach those kinds of bumpers that are sensitive at the back of the car because the one at the front of the car is going to take so much damage when you're plowing through trees and stuff. Stick it at the back to protect it. Now what this limb shield does is that uh, it stops like the bunnies attaching themselves to your car, the abductors dragging you off, the annoying bubblegum gits dragging you off. 
It's very, very useful, and it's very, very low in the amount of energy that it uses. Particularly if you're fleeing through a, a wood, and you're going to get loads of damage that way. I think that's how most of the damage occurs in the cars. When you panic, and you're driving, like, at a straight line towards the, uh, towards the pillar of light to get back to the garage. So the limb shield does reduce physical damage and stops all these gits attaching themselves to you. It doesn't seem to stop the vampires nicking bits off your car, though, so just be aware of that. But what I tend to do is, if I'm in a higher level area and there's loads of gits around you, I park up, activate the limb shield, and go off and do my collecting, because then you know your car's still going to be there when you get back, and not towed off somewhere and flogged off on the black market, yes. Next, I want to talk to you about dumpster pearls. Now, these can be discovered in various, well, dumpsters out in the world, or in the back of trucks and so on. I thought all you had to do was build your matter deconstructor, shove them in it, and it'll give you loads and loads of stuff. But this is incorrect. I was reading on Reddit a really, really interesting post about these dumpster pearls, and they have different stasis effects that can apply to them. And if they've got different effects on them, they'll churn out different stuff. I will link the original Reddit post in the description below. Thank you very much indeed. Go and have a read of that. It's utterly fantastic. Now, I've collected a couple of dumpster pearls and brought them back here to the garage to see if we can change what type of dumpster pearl it is. So, what we've got here is one that's called unreliable. You fix it, you can't do it. Out of this, you'll just get your normal basic materials. However, we can change this uh, by using certain tools. So, if I get my impact hammer out, let's see if we can change this to cracked. And from this, we'll get uh, copper wire and pressurized cartridges. Let's have a little look. And boom. Where'd it go? It's over there. Let's see if it's changed now. There we are. Look. Oh, it's gotten oxidized, rather. So you can get it cracked or oxidized sometimes. Now, if you get an oxidized one, uh, you're going to get fabric and chemicals out of this baby. So let's put this in our hands. Let's pick it up. Uh, and we'll go and take it to the matter deconstructor and see what happens. Here we go. Let's dump it in so we should get fabric and chemicals out of it. There we are, look at all those chemicals, great, and fabric as well. Oh, that's good, and we got a little decal, we got a little bit of paint there as well. That is excellent. Now, this one says unreliable, so let's see if we can change this one. Right, so now we're going to try and get this charged, and we can do this by getting it struck by lightning from a spark tower. So we can either leave it on the floor, or let's see if we can get it changed if it attacks us here. Go on, uh, let's just chuck one down by there as well. See if we can tempt it in. Go on, tempt it in again. Over here, look. Let's, tr let's try and tempt it here. Come along, come along. Let's hit me, baby. One more time. There we go. Right, that should. I've changed that now to a charged one. And that will give us rubber and gas cylinders. Let's have a look. Yes, look. It's charged. It's electrical. We can scan it. There we go. It's now charged, which is really, really cool. So this is a good way for you to sort of get different types of dumpster pearls. Now you can also change these dumpster pearls into wet ones, but you can only drop it in a body of water or a puddle or something like that. In the rain, it won't work. Now this one is charged. Let's just see if I drop it, whether it'll go to wet. Pop it in there. Yeah, look, it's changed. Pick it up again, look, and there we are. It's changed to wetness, look, which is great. So uh, when it's wet, it means it drops electronics and circuit boards. So there we go. We look at our dumpster pearl here, and it is wet. That's the one we just did. So let's grab that and put it in the um, matter deconstructor. So we should get electronics and circuit boards out of it. Let's find out. And we've got our normal scrap, of course. There's our circuit boards. Oh, we've got a bulb as well. Well, there we are. That's pretty cool. Excellent. So what you've got then is you've got the unreliable uh, dumpster pool, which is your basic one, and that you get your basic stuff out of it. You get a burned out one, uh, which is as found as well. So you can only find a burnt out one. That'll give you plasma, lead platelets, and marsh eggs. That's a really good one to do. Uh, the cracked one... Uh, which you can do by uh, using the impact hammer on it, but it can also sometimes make it oxidized. But if it's a cracked uh, dumpster pearl, you'll get copper wire and pressurized cartridges as extras. If it's charged, so if you leave it by one of the spark towers, that's the only way we can find to do that. That gives you rubber gas cylinders, not rubber gas cylinders, rubber and gas cylinders. Uh, if it's wet, like the one I just did, you get electronics and circuit boards. If it's oxidized, so you can either do that with the Liberator or you've got a chance of doing it with the Impact Hammer. You get fabric and chemicals from it as well. And then a the peculiar one, if it says it's peculiar, uh, that's as found. We can't make it peculiar by doing anything weird to it. But that'll give you uh, vacuums, Liberators, bio lamps, and things like that. 
But remember, if you've got the larger dumpster pools, you'll get better stuff. So you maybe have a better chance of getting the better tools like the thermal vacuums or even a plasma scrapper, perhaps. So there we go. Those dumpster pools have a whole level of little game involved with them, which I think is totally brilliant. Now, one of the most important things, of course, are resources. And this is no truer than in the end game if you're really looking to max out everything and get everything built that you want in the fabricator. Now, what you want to realize is that when you look at any of the junctions here, you can see on the root analysis on the side there, we've got the different categories, okay? And if we click to, uh, we can see what each one means. So we can see the green anomaly there means there's atmospheric shifts, anomaly densities, we've got radiation. But if you look on the right-hand side, right at the bottom, with that little hammery thing, it's got resource density. Density? <laughs> density. Now, what we're looking for for this is to say max, because that means the maximum amount of resource that you can harvest from an area. So we have a little look here. I've got B1 there. It says okay. Uh, low there in A6. Low there in A1. Uh, high there in uh, that one there. But what you want to do is if if you want to be able to look for Olympium, you need to go and go to a, a maxed out area for the best chance to get it. Uh, now, of course, Olympium can only be found on the inner zone there, which is by this ring wall here. So you need to have a look for an area that, uh, well, has got max resources. But however, you may find that they haven't. Look, we've got low, we've got low. Uh, that's high, it's not too bad, that's not too high. But you can re-roll individual areas uh, and see if you get a better chance of uh, getting a max density resources. Now you do this by building the junction stabilizer. That's this baby here. Now let me show you though how it works because in order to uh, buy it and create it, you need to come here to the garage tab and then have a little look and you can see there, look, junction re-stabilizer. So for it, you need to have a craft mat, scrap metal, thermosap crystals and plasma and unstable energy. So it's not too bad to get. You don't need any of the end game materials to buy it. Then once you buy it, uh, you'll pop it out of the vacuum cleaner and then you'll stick it over here and create it there. So now how you use it, you go to your root planner and we'll just use this A6. We may not be lucky, it's not gonna happen each time, but we scan the root first of all. And uh, that then gives us the circle around it and the possible routes that lead to it. Then if you come off it and then go back onto it, you can see now at the bottom, I'm using an Xbox controller, it says Y, re-roll. So I can re-roll this to see if I can get max resources and maybe reduce some of the other ones. So I'm going to re-roll it with the junction stabilizer. Bang. Whoa, straight away. Totally amazing. Look, I've got max cars, max houses and max resources. So this is a good place for me to go and have a look to see if I can pick up some Olympium and some various other endgame malarkeys, which is what I intend to do. So that junction restabilizer is excellent because it'll give you a chance to real roll things and have a good chance of harvesting. Here's something else to think of as well when you're traveling. The smaller junctions, there's lots more of them. It'll take you a lot longer to get to where you want to go. You want to use the main highways, like the ones with the badges on it, G1, D1. You can see, look, it's only... You do kind of stop halfway, but it cuts down an awful lot of time getting to where you're going because of the big, thick roads, and they go there a lot quicker. Or if you want to go up uh, to the north on the, on the east side here. So where is it? Let's have a look there. I see that all the way up to F1 there. And that connects with B1. That's another really quick way to get into the end zone. Instead of going E7, G9, C4, A9, A2 or whatever. So if you want to get to the end zone quickly, use the highways to travel. And before you go, re-roll the various ones so you can try and get uh, a maximum resource. Just be very careful though, you don't end up going to a dead end which doesn't have any limb gates or any exits. If they're complete dead ends, you'll never ever get out of them, which is very annoying, yes. Now the next thing you want to build to make your endgame farming trips a lot quicker and easier is this baby here. It's called the Junction Bypasser. It kind of looks like... Well, it looks like a Zeroid again from Terrahawk. Everything looks like Zeroids to me. Anyway, what it is, if you have a little look here, go to the old computer thingy here and uh, there it is junction bypass this is brilliant it's so useful because what it does is if you go to plan a route that you want to go say for example uh, I wanted to go here to uh, a3 right at the top yeah so I could scan it for uh, doodars there excellent and it'll tell me whatever it is and then and then what you do is once you get in the car you don't pick the next point that you want to go on. So normally I'd go G, I'd pick G1, and then I'd pick D1, and then I'd get there. 
Uh, what you do is just pick the end point that you went to go to. And what will happen then is that with this junction bypasser, it'll skip the junctions. So it'll skip G1 and it'll skip D1. They're the more in-depth ones. The only part it won't skip on the highways, you stop halfway and it's just a straight through road to go from one end to the other. They're really fast. You just drive in a straight line and then you'll go to the next midpoint. So what will happen is I'll pick that and then I'll go uh, from here. I'll stop in the middle there, drive the straight line. I'll skip that junction, G1. Stop in the middle of this one, drive the straight line. Skip that one, stop in the middle of this one, uh, drive the straight line, and then I'll be there. So the big, big parts of the maps, you just want to get somewhere specific, particularly to do end game farming, like Olympium, for example, then this is really, really useful. I mean, it's useful for going anywhere, really, but it's brilliant because it just saves you on fuel, saves you the stress, saves you getting distracted, so you can actually focus on where you need to go and what you want to do. I can highly recommend them. They're great. Now, the rarest resource in the game is this, the Olympium Fragments. Now, you can only find these in the end zone areas. So, you know what I mean? Anything that's in the end, in the center zone. So, let's have a little look here. So, uh, where where I went uh, to farm some, I went directly to A3 up here, but, and I've been reading this on Reddit posts as well and various other parts, on the internet, you can see here it's got junction A3 and then it says back roads. When it says adrocyte up there, that means you've got a good chance of getting Olympium. I just found the adrocyte, I did a scan and I got, went there and I found around about 33 Olympium fragments in one run. That was very, very useful. Make sure you take a resource scanner and scan the area so you know exactly where they are. But when you do your resource scanner, drive on a bit, stop. Don't use your resource scanner when you're going, it kind of gets confused. Stop, do a ping, and then you want to look for the Olympium Fragments uh, icon, which you'll see. It doesn't look like anything else, really. You can see a couple of them on the screen here. Head towards them there. Now, in order to get the Olympium Fragments off the rock posts, because they're kind of like on rocky outcrops, you need uh, the Advanced uh, Magnetic Impact Hammer, which is this baby here. That one there, yeah? You need the Magnetic one, not the normal one, in order to smash them off, and then you can suck them up with your, uh, with your Thermal Vacuum. So that's how you get the Olympium Fragments. Check for the map. And look for the Adra sites. Or is it Arda? Arda sites, yes. They'll be the ones that'll have the uh, Olympium trees or the Olympium posts, as you can call them, where you can collect them. Just make sure you take your magnetic hammer along with you. And finally, we've got something really cool that's entered into our workshop. Now, it's not something you can unlock. It's something that we've just been given. Now, you know uh, when it's raining outside and you're working in your workshop and it feels really drafty and you want to enclose yourself in the elements. Well, look, they've given us a garage door button. Ta-da! Excuse my voice. It's on the way out. There we go. So now you can close the garage door and you can... Uh, Feel nice and cozy as well. Now, I've got two other guides here for Pacific Drive. They're the Beginner's Guide and the Advanced Player's Guide. Now, of course, this is the end game, guys. You probably know a lot more, but it would be worth your while maybe having a look at them because they may be things that you don't know too much about. Now then, if you enjoyed the vid, a like and subscribe would be utterly fantastic. And let me know in the comments if you've unlocked any cool stuff that you want me to know about. Oh, look, that's a Lazarus device there. I still haven't used that yet. Thank you so much for watching and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage hurt.